Ron Schulte is an individual that has, for a long time, seen the need for common data vocabulary and semantic interoperability. So with that, I'll pass it over to Ron Schulte. Thank, thank you, Michael. Uh, and I appreciate uh, everyone's uh, presence here as we uh, get into what I consider a very important part of what, how you manage data. I, I truly believe it's important to manage data by, first of all, understanding the metadata associated with data. And the ODAP standard is one of, I consider, a, a critical part of that whether it be toward uh, smart cities or smart anything or help you manage uh, you know, the, the vast the big data associated with uh, a business. And I've got an example with a use case. The use case happens to be associated with a very, very large shipping company. They're, they're Enterprise Architect is directly involved with the ODEF project team in helping to put together a use case. And I'll be briefly talking about that in this slide here. So with that, let's start with looking at what are some of the typ typical problems. Uh, and then the shipping industry use case will highlight some of those problems and the need for a solution because of the complexity of what they have to go through. And as, as highlighted by Don, when you want to understand and analyze data, you naturally begin to categorize data. When I was growing up, I played the game of, is it a is it a person, place, or thing? I don't know if you've played that game, but in so many questions, you get down to what it is that the person's thinking about. And you, you answer either yes or no based on them asking questions, and then you get down to figuring out what it is. Well, there's a natural tendency when we look at something new to categorize it. And I'm going to provide an illustration of how ODEF is an intuitive categorization approach. Uh, and then, you know, what are, the, what are the capabilities that are necessary for a solution, which really are going to highlight what ODEF is all about. And then what are some of the key features of ODEF, and then what's the business value of the ODEF standard. So what are some of the typical problems? First of all, enterprise applications within the stovepipe or silo, if you will, of one enterprise are generally built without regard to a common vocabulary across those applications. You typically go out and you buy some vendor product, you plug it in, you have to deal with all the APIs that are tying that application to the other applications they have to interface with. And in many instances, large organizations, and uh, I came from a large organization called Lockheed Martin, a very large organization with, with thousands of applications. So our, our spider web was tremendous. Um, and then, Many organizations also have to exchange data with multiple external organizations. And then some people would say, well, how about using standards, okay? Well, the problem there is many of the standards out there conflict with each other. With the exception of two standards on that list there, every one of those other remaining standards all deal with the concept of address, physical location address. You'd think that at least they could get their act together and compare notes to come up with a common approach for how address should be represented. And that's not true. So it's, it's an issue. Everybody comes up, even standards bodies, come up with their own 
mindset of what, you know, how to represent concepts. So, who are the two? UNSPC and UNC? Yeah. Ooh. <laughs> okay. Shipping industry. Again, a very <coughs> large shipping company. Uh, they, not only is there the item starting at the factory, ultimately getting out to the end consumer, the item, but then there's the containers that go around multiple items. Uh, so you've got the container carrying you know, thousands of items within them, and then you've got thousands of containers on container ships, or on, you know, you could have a thousand containers riding on a train. You might have a, two or three containers, you know, going by truck. Bottom line is you've got multiple companies, you've got multiple countries and locations, especially when you get into crossing borders, country borders, so you've got export-import requirements. You've got lots of plans and actual events that happen, and then you've got unplanned events like hurricanes in the case of, or other kinds of weather issues for the trucks and so forth. And then you've got uh, reporting requirements you want to know the status of your containers. You want to know the status of those goods that are in the containers. And there's no common vocabulary. And the, the senior architect from this large shipping company saw, heard about the ODEF at the last open group meeting, which was in London, said, I like what you what you've got here. We need to incorporate it and they're involved now in helping us build a guide for the use of the unit. So I'm going to provide you a little bit of insight into what that is. But first I want to highlight their, their problem is very complex in the shipping industry. You've got all these legs with each, you know, whether it's the train or the ship or the truck, you got all these legs. You load cargo, you depart, you arrive, and you discharge or unload whatever it is you're carrying. And then it goes on to the next carrier, and then the next carrier, and the next carrier. Uh, in addition, they have a plan for all of those four items. And then something happens, you have to adjust it so it becomes an estimated time. And then you've got an actual. And so you're keeping track of a log that keeps track of all the date times of all of these things. And so all of these things then are part of a, a string of things that they need to monitor because they all have to ultimately be reported. I'm going to use the analogy here out of chemistry. When you combine different elements from the periodic table, you get molecules. If you combine multiple molecules, you can get a compound. And when you want to understand what you have, you typically do analysis, you do some sort of testing to find out of a given compound, you'll do diff different types of testing. Uh, pour certain liquids with, and then boil it or heat it to determine what kind of elements are part of that compound. And so for the analysis, there ultimately has to be a, a rigorous data categorization. That data categorization <coughs> is typically, I hope everyone in here is familiar with the periodic table. All the elements known to man are part of a periodic table. And they can be arranged in different sequences based on how they want to use the data. But what's important is each of them uh, has a unique ID. 
So helium is number one because it has one proton associated with that atom. Helium has the number two. It has two protons with that atom, and so on with everything else that's in this list. And so when you combine different <coughs> elements, you then can have molecules, and molecules combined can become, can become compounds. <coughs> I'm going to suggest to you that ODEF is quite similar to the periodic table, but for data elements. And each concept in the ODEF has a unique ID. When you combine two, when you combine things from the ODEF, you get data element concepts, and then when you combine more of those data element concepts, you get a data model. Okay. So the capabilities of a solution analogous in many ways to the periodic table, you need a basic gram grammar for data descriptions. You need a consistent and reliable way of tagging the data. Okay, in other words, this ID. You can use those IDs in the periodic table to understand, um, and they've got, you know, H2O, and there's, there's a way of, of the semantics of mixing chemicals that is consistent across the entire science of chemistry. Uh, you need a language independent unique identifier for each data element concept. So since it's language independent, if you've got a concept and then it's, it's initially based on English, but that same concept then in Russian or German or French or Chinese will end up having the same ID, similar to an IP address. www.company.com has a unique ID that finds that unique spot on the planet in the internet. And so what you want to do then is enable the use of existing vocabularies. The ODEF is going to be something that's very fundamental and very intuitive, but be able to plug in existing standards that are existing vocabularies. <coughs> so some of the features of the ODEF. It was officially published by the Open Group in May 2016. It enables interoperability with an intuitive categorization of basic units of data. It does have a language independent unique ID for each concept. And the core index, core being part of the basic standard, has 12 basic object classes. And there's just a few of them there. Fundamental, what is an enterprise? What is a person? What is a product? What is a process? What is an event? They're all defined and they have unique IDs. Similarly, basic fundamental properties. Name, date, amount, quantity, time, measure, text, date, time. There's a total of 14. Currently, and it's not limited to this set, but currently we have identified those four standards as plugins to the ODEF. So, the United Nations Standard Product and Services Codes. We have a fundamental core object called product. The United Nations has tens of thousands of products and services identified in that standard. And so that entire list, that entire taxonomy, is a plug-in under the object class called product. Why reinvent that wheel or even try to? There's you know, decades of work that went into that, that uh, standard. And it's also the same body that gives you the barcodes that you find on anything you buy at the grocery store. Okay, UNEC Rec 20, units of measure. It's got hundreds of units of measure used by the United Nations. And I can't 
if you look at that set of units of measure, I can't imagine any unit of measure that's not already on that list. Each of those has a unique ID associated with each of those products and services, each of those units of measure, and then standard industrial codes. If you are in the U.S., you are obligated when you get your IRS ID to have to go and find out what kind of business are you, and you have to get it as standard industrial code. So you have to record that for your business. It has been done. If you have, you've already done it if you're in the U.S. There's a similar one, but it's a little different in the U.K. And then currency codes. Nice little standard currency codes. Okay, I'll also, and by the way, that's not a limited list. Any other standard that you want to plug in to an appropriate spot in the ODEF, you, you can do that. The current snapshots have extensions for the concept of date. So things like birth date, delivery date, uh, production date, so an amount, cost amount, price amount, tax amount. And there's not a limit to other extensions as well. So just using that core set of ODEF objects and properties, you can get these kinds of concepts, and it's, it'd be much longer than this, but these are just examples. So person identifier, enterprise identifier, person family name, person given name, and so forth, as you can see there. And the unique ID, so no matter what language you're in, the concept of enterprise ID would have two underscore one across all languages. So to the shipping event model, again, I've already highlighted the fact that there's you know, load, departure, arrival, unload, and this particular company, to highlight the complexity of their problem and why they see value in the ODEF, they have 742 vessels, they carry 12 million containers every year, and they call, you know, stop at 343 ports in 121 countries. And they have to keep track of all that, and there's, they lack a common vocabulary. So they're quite interested in coming up with an approach that would leverage ODEF to help them in their problem. In the case of ODEF, there's a fundamental core object called event. And so a proposal would be to extend event with a dot transport dot load and a dot transport dot departure, in other words, event dot transport dot arrival and event dot transport dot unload to capture those, those four events as an extension to EODF object. Similarly, an example of the plug-in. When you go to, from port to port, the export-import folks want to know what's leaving the country, and before it arrives at the port, they want to know what's, what's coming in. So there's a United Nations standard, UNSPSC. If you go to that URL, and then you enter the word steel beams, in their search title, you'll get those two options, steel beams or stainless steel beams, and they have a unique code associated with each of them. And, and if you went in and wanted plants, there's, I mean, there's over a thousand different types of plants from, from live plants to cut plants to roses to, anyway, it's just huge. Um, but the point is, these codes then can be used within the ODEF syntax. So if you combine that then, 
so that UNSPSC is a plug-in under product, which is an object class, a fundamental object class. And then the UNEC Erect 20, which has all these units to measure, is a plug-in under, under the measure. Then you've got a complete ODEV name, which says, I've got a product, it's UNSPSC version 18, I've got steel beams, underscore, I've got a measure, UNEC Rec 20, mechanics, dot mass, dot ton, dot hyphen, uh, metric ton. So you want to, you know, obviously they have metric ton, and then they also got, uh, you know, the standard uh, ton as, that, as used in the U.S. So that whole concept then has this other ODEF data concept identifier which is derived from the syntax of the ODEF itself coupled with those IDs that are coming from, in other words, TME is the, is the representation for the UNEC REC 20 for that measure. And similarly, if this container ship has a temperature sensor because they've got a refrigerated container, you want to know what the temperature is, and you want to know the end of the measure of that temperature sensor. Uh, so applying the same principles with UN UNSPSC version 18, and look, just enter temperature or sensor, you get all the different kinds of sensors that are part of UNSPSC. And then the code associated with the temperature sensor is that one there for 1111970, and then you're monitoring the uh, temperature in Celsius. And so again, the complete ODEF name following the syntax rule of the standard is as shown here, but its equivalent data and concept identifier is as shown down below. So what does that do for you? The value to the shipping industry is I can say I'm, I've got 150 tons of steel beams and in another country it's 150 whatever that is in Chinese and the ship's manifest then is, is capturing the OSEP code so that when they show up in a different country then that, that code is understood and for the sake of transferring something like those codes you're reducing bandwidth it's simple you're sharing vocabulary that reduces the need for multiple apis and you're basing it on existing standards you're just giving it a framework that allows all these existing standards to be shared amongst multiple companies in multiple countries. Uh, it's an open source standard, again using these plugins. It's translatable into human readable language. Uh, hopefully these concepts, it's a temperature sensor that's measuring degrees Celsius. Now yes it's lengthy, but it's understandable and using this ID you go across all languages and it's enabling better communications across borders across languages this is my last slide if you want to get more information about the ODEF this is a link that allows you to get that information and that's that's my email i'm the chairman of the OEF project thank you very much ron Shaw. what do you say ron is a good project to start you know working with the application of OEF? because a standard like this as comprehensive as it can be 
is, can also seem a bit intimidating. So what would you recommend as the ideal project to start kicking the tires with something like ODEF and trying to tame the, the beast of, of data? Well, if you simply went to the current ODEF object classes and properties without worrying about how to deal with plugins, you can get hundreds of concepts that are common to almost any business. I mean, person, uh, family name, person given name, enterprise name, person identifier. Um, there's, there's just a whole lot of concepts that are common to so many businesses. Uh, just with the, the original core set of, of the object classes and properties. And just look at what's there. And, and I want to highlight very significantly that uh, we can extend ODEF, submit a proposal or get involved with the ODEF project team and propose extensions to what's already there. Um, and the process is really quite simple. Yes, I, I wonder, could, could we imagine that, I mean, if, if RDF is the basis of the semantic gut, I mean, you're all set up with the notion of subject product and object. Why we can't help market o ODEF is the concept of it's, it's RDF ready. ODEF, RDF ready. The, the, the entire ODEF standard itself is already in the standard. It is RDF. I mean, it, it, it appears as RDF. Yeah. I, I just, you know, I don't know if people get it. I mean, I think we're probably getting to the point where people get that REF is the method of making <coughs> semantic web happen, for making autonomous cars happen, for making uh, you know, this sort of next generation of smart things. But ODEF should be that mechanism. The Internet of Things, uh, I, I have one example here, but, but <coughs> obviously it could play a key role in the Internet of Things. Because anything you can imagine has probably got some sensor tied to it. And if you go to the UNSPSC, they got pressure sensors, they got temperature sensors, and other sensors that make that about every kind of sensor you can think of. And then just what kind of unit measures it, uh, you know. Yes. Uh, sometimes um, what holds up the adoption of these sorts of things is that it requires some manual input, uh, tagging these things, bringing them in. But now that we have technologies that do recognition and uh, video and, and other mechanisms, uh, different types of sensors, and we can apply and use intelligence, is there a way of sort of automating uh, the input uh, across a business process like shipping where uh, some sort of uh, automated machine type of approach brings all that data into the uh, ODEF that then therefore allows for that cross pollinization throughout the data uh, ecosystem. Yeah, if if a company is a member of the UNSPSC, you were able to download a Excel file that contains all of the UNSPSC uh, names plus their codes and if you're not a member, then you can, anybody can go online and do what I sort of demonstrated or showed here on this slide. Um, in addition, uh, on the ODEF website, we're in the process of building an application that would allow you to enter some terms and then get its associated ODEF ID. Yes, yes. Well, I'll also offer you know, the, the question that you, you've just asked is, is, to me, a very cool one. I think everyone in this room and maybe everyone in this conference, we sort of intuitively get this. We know this is a good thing. We all in our respective teams and projects perhaps have ex explanations or excuses, different priorities, right, that dictate why we haven't done it, like security in many cases. Um, but what, what makes this kind of exciting and a good opportunity for many vendors and, and IT consumers is the dynamic you just mentioned, that some of the technologies that could support this happening at scale are in place. But part of what we're doing is trying to lay the groundwork where you support an industry like shipping, you support industries like Smart City, and Open Group is not really in the market to make money. 
but we're as a group here to facilitate innovation, better success, you know, better uh, better technology through open standards. So that definitely could be done. Um, I work for a company that I made that suggestion to, but I'm not CEO, so I can't make it happen. If your company is in that realm, I strongly recommend you consider it because I imagine there's there's market value because even uh, data entry folks are going to be more expensive than a model powered by an IBM Watson or, a, or an AlphaGo or a DeepMind or what have you. So you're exactly right in seeing that, and, and we're you know, providing a foundation, offering it to the community, and, and seeing where people want to take it. Well, imagine that uh, Google DLP is a lot of invention. Uh, they charge 20 bucks an hour to run that class of hour. and it picks a lot of fields. So you can send a stream of data, and it will detect well, it's a first name, last name, middle name, um, your address, your city, postal code, so you say, telephone number, license number, or social security number. Detect what that is and tag it, give it back to you for 20 bucks an hour. Well, shouldn't there be one that does the same thing, that actually pipes it through a through ODAF and checks it, and then essentially the plug it, calls you an SBC, and gives you the cut roses is a one one four zero three nine. Yes. And should that be twenty bucks an hour? Sure. And then you'd have what is it? Is eighty five thousand or one hundred eighty five thousand list? Well, in the version eighteen, it was eighty seven thousand. It was eighty seven thousand. They've gone beyond that. It's like so. And so yeah, you that, that would be great because essentially what you've done is you could fingerprint all of your data to an integer. And isn't that the same as masking? Except it's one step shorter. It's actually cheaper because you don't have to classify it to a word and then ultimately classify it and then have a key to it. You could actually put it in the US piece of paper. So it's a great story, just you know, funding it. Have you um, seen some of the work from the ISA 95 model? It's a uh, little similar. I guess that would be a new standard that you can have an association with. <coughs> yes, that's an enterprise model where they uh, where they do things like shipping between companies and things like that. Okay. It's a uh, I suspect that the uh, contact that we have on this company uh, is probably aware of that. So could you is that ISA or yeah? yeah. Uh, ISI. ISI. Sorry. Sorry. I didn't, didn't quite catch that. Do we have any other questions for uh, for Ron Schultz as far as um, business value of some of the semantic applications of the ODEF standard? And if you're if you're you know not sure who the right person to ask your question is, we do have following this a panel discussion with our speakers today. So you'll have opportunity to field your question to multiple folks. Okay, so hearing no other questions, again, a round of applause for Ron Schultz.